I'm just so happy that this worked. You see, again, this is a proof of concept. Now that I know it works, I can invest some time in making it work better. I'll try and get you some more materials. <laughs> oh, this is, this is amazing. I did have to take apart the mining mining uh, That's okay. wagon for this, but uh, I feel it was a sacrifice worth making. I I think this thing will be multi-purpose enough to do both duties. You see, I haven't really been able to test what slows the walk down, because the walk can pull me up a hill. Fair enough. And there doesn't seem to be any change in, in speed, well, but what I'm noticing is every now and then, one wheel will stop, and I think it's the way that I've built the steering, honestly, that it's just kind of clipping itself. So maybe that's more of the problem here. And if I built the uh, steering columns a little bit better, the walk would have no trouble pushing us. I, I want to find out how much one walk can pull. Is it kind of like a draft horse? Oh. Can it pull a, a fully laden wagon? I, you know, I don't know. Oh, you're going to have... You're probably going to want to attach some saw blades to that thing. Like, I think oh, yeah. you should go yeah, full I war absolutely. wagon with that thing. Giant cube covered in saw blades at, you know, kind of... Can, can I paint my walk? Can I can I give, give my walk war paint? Because I feel that that would be amazing. I... Well, I mean, if you're really dedicated, you could... You could cover... You could do Trojan walk and have the Trojan walk be walk powered. And covered in war walk paint. This is amazing. This is amazing. And on the inside, there'd be a platform. Like you know, the whole vehicle would be would be carried. Well, not carried, but pushed along by walks who you know are, are in contact with the ground. But the middle of the wagon would just be a bed of wood, and on that bed would be a walk who's pushing against the the, the gear housing that I've already spoken about, and that is driving the saw blade. That's going to be amazing. Ah. It actually did manage to pull me up this hill. I mean, okay, look, I know it's taken me a long time to get back to base, but I need to know how long it's going to take to get back to base and whether one walk can do it. Because if one walk can do it, maybe two can do it faster, but maybe not. Either way, this is science, ladies and gentlemen. You should probably this is make a uh, controller so that the uh, the corn gets moved directly above them. Yeah, no, that that's exactly what I was thinking of the next thing I would do. Uh, either a switch or a controller or something. Well, I think a, a controller would be necessary to, to drive a, yeah. a bearing. But um, yeah, have the corn. And if I had the walk in the middle, right? And then it, like in the in the middle of the vehicle, perhaps, and some sort of like uh, frame uh, going up and over the walk uh, with uh, just, just a, a bearing with a, an extended arm um, just, a, just a long pipe with corn on the top, then the switch could flip it from pointing in front of the walk, pointing straight up, to pointing behind. Now, what I want to know is if I move the corn from in front of the walk to the behind of the walk, and the walk has got enough room to turn around, I'd have reverse. I would have a reverse gear on my walk-powered wagon. This is amazing. I... This is absolutely not how I'm meant to play the I, game, but I couldn't be happy. Who cares? That's that's the point of these things. Oh, and now my walk is getting a breather because I'm going downhill. <laughs> this, is, this is now a wagon-powered walk. <laughs> it's starting to trot a little bit faster, though. It, it looks like it, it, it's a bit uncomfortable with the wagon just pressing up against its rump and pushing it forward, but, you know. Eh, I imagine they're, like, kind of marshmallowy. What I could do is I could have a chest full of spare corn, and every now and then I actually feed the walk some corn so that it produces some milk. And then I have, ah, oh, it's marvelous. Basically my own farm. I don't need seeds or, or growing things and dealing with robots. It's me and my walk wagon. I mean, that uh, does, does definitely get around my mate, my biggest complaint about this game, which is namely, I hate collecting fuel after X number of hours. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's actually one of the things that, that prompted me to think about this because the whole thing of going out and getting oil, I wasn't even clear exactly on, on how we were getting it. And it just seemed like one of the things you mentioned was like, oh yeah, there's no point because you have to get so much fuel and you're not even going to be able to fly. And I was like, how can I make my endeavors more fuel efficient? And you really can't get more fuel efficient than no fuel. Pretty much. Well, I mean, I guess the corn is fuel, but it's... The walk is producing energy without getting to eat the corn. So really, I just need an initial investment of fuel, and then I never need any more.
I see you up there. Planting with yep. the uh, farm butt. I might be back at base, but once you know you're done there and you know all of the other towers, and you've actually built a metropolis somewhere, <laughs> maybe maybe I'll have arrived at base by then. Gonna take take me a bit before I get that far. Uh, I I have faith in you. <laughs> it's gonna take what me I a want... long time to get back to base. Oh, what I want to do is go get enough uh, go get enough cotton so we can actually have mobile beds, so we can spawn at our cars instead of back at the garage. Yeah. Because in you know, my solo run, I've got a bed just strapped to the back of my car. Really uncomfortable. No one could ever sleep like that, but... Oh, fuck it. Okay, we're good. Uh, I was uh, just asked on Twitter, how does he put it in park? Well, I mean, right now, I just take the corn off the truck. Uh, but, that is... The walk will then just wander around aimlessly on its own, and will probably like, wander my truck somewhere else. Uh, however... If uh, the idea of the Wanda had, because originally I was only thinking of forward and reverse, but Wanda had the good idea of just lifting the corn directly above the walk. And at that point, the walk's not going to walk anyway, because it's always closest to the corn where exactly where it is. So that would be parking mode. The lack of music in this is it's disturbing. disconcerting I uh, we still had that radio if you want to just strap it to your walk powered car yeah I'm, I'm gonna have to do that I I, I, yeah. was, I was thinking that there was something missing. you know what I, I feel that my walk deserves to hear the radio as well oh, oh that's what I, wanted. I, I can build on this while the walk is driving oh this is amazing multitasking improves okay. ah, I'm pretty close to home I, I will be full upfront and honest. Every time I drive past you, it's real tempting to give a push, but I feel like that would <laughs> throw the science off real hard. <laughs> a little bit. <sighs> and yes, Rex Draconum, this, this is in fact being pulled by. Well, not, not an ox, it's being pulled by a walk, but it, it's the same difference. I, I. I'll be honest, I am so pleased with myself for this. I, I'm almost ready to say, yeah, I've, I've done everything I can do in this game. It, it can't get higher than this. I'm only there, there's only disappointment ahead for me now. <laughs> it's all just wrap it up. Uh, I don't know. I feel I feel like I feel like there are depths that you have yet to to reach with this walk powered car. Oh, I need food. Uh. I don't suppose you'd be able to drive me some food, could you? I don't have oh, enough corn uh, to keep my vehicle moving and feed the walk enough to get cooked milk. I will admit, I just sunk my car in preparation oh. for the night, but I can run you a carrot. Two, in fact. Thank you. A scholar and a gentleman. That's what Wonder Woman is. Scholar and a gentleman. By the way, you, when you were playing uh, Terraria yesterday, uh, what did you get up to? Well, like, How far did you get? Uh, we we're trying to beat the Eater of Worlds, but he is kind of a jerk. Ah. Uh, how do I drop? Oh, right. There you go. Thank you very, very much indeed. Hom, trump, 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 trump. Hom, trump, 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 trump. Ah, oh, it's marvelous. I can jump yeah, out of I... the vehicle, let it drive, and still get back on it, because it won't have gone that far. Unlike a car, which would just be the other side of the map by now. Whenever I play Terraria, my usual immediate goal is to get as many hearts as I possibly can and disregard everything else, because I really do kind of need that HP. Right, yeah, yeah. And then after, after I've done a sufficient amount of that, then I start trying to boss rush it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I... I kind of split my time, because I was streaming for about nine hours yesterday. I split my time more or less even, well, no, I wouldn't say quite evenly, probably two thirds building my base and a third spelunking and doing all the things you normally The new base building do. mechanics are actually super nice. I really appreciate yeah. the, uh, the fact that the NPCs have wants and needs and get mad at you if you have the golfer in the base. I consigned the golfer to hell real quick. Oh, all I was doing is uh, 
just generally trying to manage their happiness, make sure their neighbors were the right sorts. I, I did have to move some of them at one point so that they weren't right next to each other. I only have one town so far. I don't have multiple towns yet. I, I expanded. But, uh, I, admittedly, your your town's probably a hell of a lot better than mine. I just have kind of a basic NPC dungeon, but with big rooms because they like this space. And that seems to right. keep them pretty happy. Um, yeah, they all seem then, to enjoy the spaciousness of mine. Then we found the Gulfer Underground, and everybody got real mad. Uh, so my assumption is just no one likes the Gulf guy. And so, yeah, we, we stuck him in... You know those, like, kind of random half-complete rooms with, like, treasure chests in them underground? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just completed the wall in there and then just slapped the Gulfer banner down. And it worked actually really well. Yeah, fair enough. Fair warning... Uh, we've got about a minute and a half before a bunch of bots come and attack, so you might want to take the walk-powered car away from the shore. Uh, yeah, I was I was going to just try and park it here and then protect it, but that's probably a good call. Yeah, it, uh, they're probably going to start breaking it if it's just made out of basic scrap wood. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to try and cheat. Walk, I hope you are safe. Thank you very much for bringing me home. But, uh, yeah, I uh, I have this thing of... I'll often just be wandering around. In fact, that's one of the things that, that some of my uh, viewers commented on the most. Is that that uh, I would be spelunking and I'd want to pop down a door or something for safety. And then I'd be compelled to build a little room with a, a fire pit and some chairs and nice walls and stuff. So... My base very quickly started to, to expand, and uh, every now and then I've got these little safe houses down in the caves just where I needed to go AFK or something. Um, but yeah, I spent most of my time just beautifying the rooms and just building up a, a nice little, little town for them. The temptation after Dragon Quest Builder is definitely there. Like, that game, that game really drove home, like, yeah, make oh, your yeah. town look nice. It'll actually yeah. feel better. Though in Dragon Quest Builders, it, it genuinely is useful to have a pretty town. Like, like really good to have a pretty town. Yep. I really want to play a... Oh, shoot. I, I want to play an RPG at some point where, like, the whole, like, the whole of your town determines what your stats are. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, okay. take it... Take... Oh, they're here already. That does not... Okay. I was wondering... I know that they just swam, so it was kind of obvious that it, it wasn't going to take them down, but uh, still, it's a game, and sometimes games don't exactly have the, the most uh, logical connections. I threw a bucket of water on the small ones, and it, was, uh, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I mean, one would assume that if they were swimming over, that maybe it wasn't going to, but at the same time, I don't want to check. Hello? But I think it was Dragon Quest Builders 1. If you had certain structures in it, you would get, like, a, a flat stat bonus. It wasn't much, but I think you got, okay. like, extra HP from one or two of them. I could be very wrong on that, but, like, it would be so satisfying to have, like, you built an armory. You and all your townsfolk are this much stronger. Uh, yeah. And there's, like, no art, uh, no leveling system. It's just, like, how good is your town? Um, Because I think that would yeah, really incentivize the whole kind of like make a really nice like well-built town or cheese the heck out of it because you can also do that yeah well that's the thing is that it comes down to how do they quantify what a good town is what well, defines a good town for them i, uh, I think the thing is though you where... you could absolutely just like let somebody if somebody wants to just spam a clock towers so you have a five five star zoo then, sorry, I was playing Parkosaurus and that's what I did. I made a five-star zoo without <laughs> a single dinosaur. And, uh, yeah, the game just let me and I made a lot of money from it. And I was just like, this feels real silly, but I like it. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like no, trying to enforce, like, some kind of beauty, beauty pageant judge system would just make it less fun. Easier to just say, like, okay, you have met the base criteria. Everything else is just, like, aesthetically, like, 
your job if you want to actually make it look nice. But you know, you've got the you've got the impressive armory with the, you know, weapon racks stuck to the ceiling where no one could feasibly ever reach them. But you know, it's there, yeah. good enough. But that's what what I often come down to with like it's such a hit and miss thing. For example, Rimworld. Rimworld says, right, for someone to have a room that they don't feel cramped in, it has to be this big. But it feels hopelessly dumb how big of a room that is. It's like, yeah. really? Um, and and the, I think that's where things uh, fall down a little bit, is, is trying to quantify. And, and it doesn't, I'm not necessarily talking about, oh, this is beautiful versus this is not beautiful. Because you can kind of game that and just say, yeah, the you know this was made by someone with high creative stats. And thus, it is a 9 out of 10 statue or whatever. Um, but it's when you start getting really ab uh, to abstract um, definitions of of uh, this town is good, what makes a good town sort of thing, um, that it gets a little bit more clunky to try and do. But I love the idea of that. I really like the idea of having, like you said, like, you know, the town is what defines your stats. I, I enjoy games where what defines your stats is, is your equipment, not um, your... Uh, like, you know, I put this many points into archery. You know, it's like, no, I've got a better bow. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, games that do that uh, particularly well. None are jumping to my mind at the moment, but uh, for example, with skills, you've got games like uh, Path of Exile, where the skills are, are largely based on the gems you've got. Path of Exile is one of those games that I always want to get further into, but every time I like really put my time into it, I'm just like, I get, I get to that prison, and then I just, I don't get out. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I don't think I've ever actually played Path of Exile. It's, it's a fun game. It's just kind of long. I think is what it comes down to for me. In a yeah. way that it doesn't really feel... Like, a lot of other games are longer, but something about Path of Exile's, like, core gameplay loop, you really have to push push past the the middle. And once you get past that, then it becomes, like, really fun again. Uh, yeah. But it's just this long process until then. And I think for a lot of, like, purists and, like, big fans, that doesn't matter in the slightest. But every time I try and pick it up, I'm just like, I could be playing other games, and then that's just quickly what it devolves down into. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. Let's see. Yep. Hey. Perfect. We're gonna start building uh, some lights for our base. Oh, okay, cool. I don't think we have enough resources to make too many. Eh, that's a lot of lights, actually. Uh, they don't require any power or anything like that, so we can just string them up on a framework. Ah, cool. Okay. I just went out to grab some uh, materials to build a wheel, but my chat is informing me that there was, in fact, a wheel in one of the chests. Yeah, it's a small wheel, not one of the big ones. Ah, no. Right, okay. I want to try and make... An e well, actually, I guess an extra big one isn't that necessary for this vehicle. Uh, we have... I, I just want to improve We have 19 stuff. beeswax sitting around, so that might be good enough for you. That up. I want to try and make the walk enclosure a little better. Though I wonder. Now I'm, I'm. Right now the walk is simply pushing against the front, but I wonder if I could have the wagon elevated based on uh, collision with the walk's back. Like, like a strap across its back, keeping the, the wagon from sagging at the front. I... Huh. <laughs> Look, it's not cruel, okay? No, no, I'm not... I'm mostly just, like, thinking about how this game would actually react to that level of sort of physics abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. Yeah. Uh... I 
Let's see. By the way, in your aimless uh, walkie wanderings, let me know mm -hmm. if you see a uh, a forest that looks like particularly a tunnel, because that's okay. the only place to get cotton in the game. And I would ah. like to find one. Sure. I will let you know. Ooh. Okay, Close. there we go. Uh, Try it a little bit. Yeah. I think it's because I got... It was loading a chunk for both of us. Ah, uh, okay. And that does not a uh, happy scrap mechanic make. And now that it now that it's figured it out... It's not so bad, but that that intermittent mo moment where it's just like, what do I do? Yeah. Ah, here we go. Suspension. We need metal blocks and oil, I think. How is the walk-powered car going? Did did you actually manage well, to strap up the walk? Uh, I haven't tried yet, actually. I'm trying to make some suspension, just to make the, the contact with the wheels a little bit better, because I think that's a part of the problem that with the, with the steering is coming from there. I'm fairly certain that the little craft bot is humming along with the radio on the car. I... That's really cute, actually. I hope yeah. so. I know... I know in Animal Crossing, if you, like, bring out a radio, they'll sing along. Which yeah. is real cute, but then Shell started singing along. And then it got stuck in my head, and now, like... <laughs> it's... Uh, it just got stuck in my head again. Uh... <laughs> that was a self ownage there. It was, and it's bad. Because it's like, the first time we ran across it, it was cute. Then the second time, I'm like, oh, it's the same song. Then I put a radio outside, and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's still pretty cute. And then by the end of it, I'm just like, okay, enough. I've heard this. You still playing Animal Crossing? You're still just kind of burning through your backlog. Uh, I'm still getting my backlog up, but uh, Shilab will be um, streaming that I think tomorrow. Uh, it'll be the the first because while she was sick, she we, I basically stopped playing it so that I wouldn't like uh, yep get ahead of her basically, and the, the town would have all completely. changed by the time she came back, sort of thing. Um, but. She will be streaming it tomorrow, so we'll be back to playing it finally. How about yourself? You that still for, I think I played that for a little over 20 hours, then I was just kind of like, I feel like I've seen everything. I have that mm. problem with a not, lot of games where I just kind of lose motivation once I've kind of experienced the the basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, is there oil in this lake? Area? There might be. Whenever there's water, there should be oil. Uh, you might have to go swimming for it a bit. I don't know how fast it respawns. Okay. The bigger the body of water, the more oil there's going to be lurking. I see. Now, the question begs. Can walk breathe underwater? I bet they float. Hmm. Can they doggy paddle? 
because if a wok can still move underwater, uh, sorry, while it's on water, Wait. you could make a boat. Yeah, you might have solved water transportation problems. Okay, new. Well, I guess here's the other option. If it doesn't really float well, or it doesn't move well, the other thing you could do is just put like a platform underneath it so it has something to kind of walk on. <laughs> Self-powered. Oh, I because I, I I I've had a billion people uh, demanding that I build a boat, and I'm just like I I don't even know how to do that without spending half of my time collecting fuel to to fuel a thruster to push me along, and that just sounds not fun. Yeah, I wonder but, if a pile of wood push you. No, I tried. Unless, unless there's something, because uh, the issue is nothing has collision with the water. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like, I, I tried using a propeller. I tried using like uh, kind of paddles on my tires to see if I could like fake paddle boat, and the answer was, it just was. It was like I was doing nothing. Right. Hopefully, they add like proper physics interactions for that sort of thing, because it would it'd be real nice to have like a boat car. Uh, and then yeah. you take driving around. But yeah, the walk powered boat would be fascinating. Well, it's definitely worth us checking out, so I shall put it on the list to do. The water physics is probably still work in progress. Oh, absolutely. To be fair, I'm still... most things in this area are probably a work in progress, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, a li I'm still a little surprised they spent four years on on this. I mean, I get... What, what they've got so far? Yeah, kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'd love to see the timelines on some other games and how, like, fast it took to develop them. Because I know Owlboy was freaking long, but it was because it was, like, two guys working on that game. And they redid the art like three times, and it was like good enough multiple iterations back. Yeah. Um, it's a good example. I guess Seven Days to Die has been in Alpha, or is yeah, it's still Alpha, right? Yeah, it's still definitely in Alpha. Yeah, that that's been in Alpha since like before my channel existed. So I guess I really should not uh, complain too much. Mind you, it has constantly been getting better. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, every time I come back to the game, that game, I'm I, I'm pretty blown away by like how much they improve. Yeah, and I think I think that's the thing is that some games, are, because the, <laughs> I imagine that feature creep is a massive problem. Oh but, yeah. Um, I think probably with a lot of games like this. It's a case of having enough, um, oh, how should I put it? Enough manpower, because obviously a, a small dev studio is going to take longer to do anything than a large dev studio. But yep. also enough discipline not to keep moving the goalposts for themselves, because it is so easy to do. It is so easy to do. And I suspect that that, that has happened a lot with a, a lot of games that have been in developed for a long time. They just keep adding more. They keep more in it. Uh, that is going to make this way too short. I guess I'm always perpetually surprised that Factorio is not done. Because, like, that game felt done to me years ago when I first played it. And I was like, yeah, this seems like a totally yeah. complete product. And then my friends that I was playing with were like, yeah, no, it's getting a major update in, like, two months. And I'm like, what? That's, that's one of those things, though. Factorio will... I mean, they're getting close, but... Uh, there's always more to do. Are they? The, yeah, kind of. Yeah, like I said, there's always more to do. <laughs> it, it is one of those things. But that's, that's kind of endearing with that. No, in fact, this is missing. Well... You're kind of in the middle. One of the things that I want to kind of slowly get into uh, is, you know, kind of some more gateway content that isn't just like episode ones. Uh, 
and I was talking to my YouTube manager about this, and he was talking about, like, yeah, you know, some light challenge videos and so on and so forth work great. I mean, half of my channel is founded on one one particular challenge, so, like, eh? Uh, <laughs> but, so, uh, I, I've been thinking about ways to do it. Like, one thing I'd like to get into mildly is reviews, just because I... Uh, I don't know how much you watch, like, Total Biscuit, but I've always felt like there's kind of a void, and I don't think I'd be able to fill it, but it's like, I just haven't found a game reviewer that I've been super interested in since DB passed yeah. on, and so, yeah. like, uh, there's there's always kind of the desire to, like, try my hand at it and see, you know, if I could even get close. Um, yeah, it's one of these things, because I've been... The, the reality is, the larger the episode number the less views you're gonna get. Yup. And part of that is because people will look at it and think, uh, oh wow, it's like episode 70, I, it would be such an investment for me to get into that series. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just skip it. They, they may well have enjoyed the, the content, but it's intimidating to see a very large episode number. And so they'll move on. And that is a real problem. Um, yep. You know, it's kind of a wonder sometimes that my my Stardew Valley series did as well as it did because that was a monster series. Something like a, I think it was 151 episodes, and that was just series one. Um, the second time I played it, I got up to like episode 80 before slowly my brain melted because of uh, <laughs> just how inefficient it was with with ranching. It, it really wasn't what I was expecting it was going to be. Um, but they've done a lot of things to, to, to improve on that, which I'm very excited about, actually. Um, I need some more pipes. But, yeah, it, it's it's definitely an interesting one. Um, By the way, are you within I, range of the crop timer? I guess you probably uh, are. Yep. Four hours. Okay, I should probably get back. Yeah, I, is, I, one one of the things I, I do is I, I try to have first tastes here and there where I just kind of dip into some content for a little bit. Um, because you don't want to start something and not finish. I, it, it's an unfortunate... Uh, one of those unfortunate things. It happens a lot, but you don't want to do it. Yeah, I... I think it's because a lot of people with the patience to watch like something longer probably have moved on to live streaming to at least some degree that the the audience yeah. has moved slightly. Yeah, and yeah, people are looking kind of for more digestible content. I'm right, gonna have to wait to see if that has solved the immediate problem until later, I guess. Oh right, I should probably get back. Uh, can you can you defend? you you'll probably be fine. Yeah, yeah, I should be okay. Okay. Because I don't I don't foresee myself getting back within the next couple of minutes. Because it's three minutes and I'm halfway up the tower. I could probably dive down and maybe get back. But yeah, yeah so the other thing you want to do is probably, uh, in this, that is, uh, automate mining to a certain degree, automate farming to a certain degree. Um, I can see this being really good for a, a bunch of little, like, um, oh, challenge yeah. builds or just one one kind of build episodes. You know, yeah. I built automated farming in this episode, and it's like a standalone thing. I think that works for a lot of people from what I've seen. I think that's how I used to handle my my creative mode or yeah that's how I handled my creative mode series because I'd, I'd just be like okay we've got an hour let's do this dumb thing be it uh, make Beyblades battle bots that sort of thing <laughs> I think works better almost in scrap mechanic uh, than like a standard say seven days to die style main problem is just for me resource collection is very time consuming and I like. How can you t tell when something's ready to harvest? By the way, uh, you should be able to like just left or right click on it. Oh know? right, there we are. Yeah, right click, pick up. 
Oh, some of them say right click to harvest, and some of them do not. Right, right, oh, right, right. grab as much as you can, and yeah. I the brick wall should slow them down long enough, especially if it's only like a handful of green bots, and you can just beat beat them from behind. I don't think they're getting over that wall. Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, harvested one thing before it was ready, and just kind of disappeared in a cloud of green smoke. But yeah, I, I would love to have more time to more time enough resources to do just like yeah, let's make an automated car. But you always have to like go out and get more upgrade kits to justify the cost or metal or something. Yeah. If there's more automation, I think it would be a lot easier. I, I should imagine that this will... That that's a direction they're going to take this in. I hope so. Right now, as a survival game, uh, it's more... Creative it's Plus. Thin. I would say it's more it's more what you've got in Creative, only there's some more mechanics to it. It isn't really what I would define as a survival game. They're saying. Right. Everything has been uh, gathered. They should be here in about two seconds. There they go. Yeah, this should be easy. I mean, there's no crops for them to take at this point. I've harvested everything. Okay, let's see if I'm faster than them. I like the idea of survival crafter games, but they always emphasize too much on the collection. I think it works for certain games. Scavenging in... Uh, seven Days to Die, for example, is very satisfying. Because you're yeah. you're constantly putting yourself at risk to go into a building you don't know what you're going to run into and you don't know what you're going to find. Well, I came to help, but I guess you didn't need me. <laughs> well, there's still oh. some fun bots over there. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll see if I can bucket uh, those guys. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and replant the, the crops. I wonder if we could put, like, a giant crusher trap right here. On like the edge, like a. How do you mean? Like a platform for them to walk on, but they can't go any further. Right. How does the crusher trap work? I uh, all you need is just a piston. Oh, you and mean like literally just something drops on them, not like yeah. a special trap. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah, like I I was experimenting with it in my solo mode, and it works real well. Uh, we'll get the green guys, but yeah, if, if there's an easier way of getting rid of the the fork bots, that actually could help a lot. These, these guys are actually kind of dangerous right here. You are right. I'm just over here watering right now. That's fine. I... Uh, the fork bots just really want the crops, and they don't really want anything else. Which means they just kind of glitch out on the on the shore, and then turn around and stab me the moment I like get close, and I'm like trying to feather them with my hammer. Yeah. Which of course that doesn't make any sense, but still. Actually, the precision of this farm does make uh, watering it fairly easy. At least. There we go. All watered. Hey, they made it so if you pick something up in the water, it doesn't just get deleted out of the universe anymore. Oh, was that a thing before? Remember? Well, it did get deleted out of the universe. It just, like, it would warp down the shore. Remember how we had that panic moment where, like, the chest... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 